Very warm welcome to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is safe and well wherever you are. Looking at the current sea surface temperatures uh, across the world, you can see the standout areas that we are looking at. The uh, rapid collapse of the Indian Ocean Dipole is quite evident. We're losing the very strong cold anomalies against the Sumatran coast, as you can see. So we're starting to neutralize the Indian Ocean temperature profile here, losing that distinct cold east and warm west. So we're seeing the rapid demise of the IOD. The El Nino is uh, fighting against um, both a negative PDO and very cold waters over the South Pacific. And what essentially that will do is that is going to eventually choke off the El Nino itself. And by the spring and into next summer, we could, believe it or not, be looking at a La Nina back in play once again. So this El Nino, in the words of um, Joe Bastardi, is a reactionary El Nino um, against a warming of um, you know global water temperatures here that he, he believes anyway that you're more likely to have favorable La Nina conditions as opposed to El Nino. I hope I'm right in saying that, by the way. I really hope I, I say I'm saying that right. But um, nonetheless, very interesting stuff with regards to what's going on. We are seeing the cooling of Nino region 1-2 uh, and a stabilizing of the 3.4 region here. And uh, the North Atlantic, somewhat of a tripole, warm over cold over warm. Need to watch out for next summer as well if the, there is a, a La Nina developing and w with water temperatures warm in the, the, the tropics versus uh, the mid tropics or the central North Atlantic, we could have a very significant hurricane season indeed. Looking at precipitation, this is off the CFSV2. And this is all about the big picture today, by the way. The peeling away from the Christmas um, you know, hysteria with regards to White Christmas. I touched on that a little bit yesterday. I will make a forecast on Monday. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I will be making a bit of a call on Monday. And that will be exactly a week before Christmas. So it'll either work out well or you can hang me at the end of it. We'll wait and see what happens. But looking at a very interesting correlation here with rainfall. Now, in super El Ninos, in east-based El Ninos, you tend to focus the precipitation over the eastern portion of the Pacific Basin. Now, the SAOI and the MEI, so that's the Multivariate Enzo Index and the Southern Oscillation Index, both are not reflecting a strong El Nino. In fact, the SOI is almost reflecting either neutral to La Nina conditions and the MEI is uh, certainly not strong at all. So it's not in the ballpark of 2015 or 97 with regards to the strength of the El Nino. And what kind of backs that up is the CFSV2 for the month of January has the heaviest precipitation focused more towards the Central Pacific. Notice here towards the date line or just east of the date line, you've got an area of enhanced convection here we've also got very dry conditions across the maritime continent wet conditions over the western portion of the indian ocean but i do think there is a little bit of a an iod almost east based type signal that's driving the pattern also helped by the, the manjulian oscillation as well we'll look at that in just a second here because i'm a big big believer I've spent a lot more time this year out of the what 14 winters that I have forecasted up until now. I've never looked in more depth at the MJO, its role on the atmosphere and its contributing factors to the overall global pattern. And also doing a lot more heavy research, in-depth research about the El Nino. And that's why I had a hard time really calling this one this winter. I have got, as you know, a very back and forth type winter, but there's things that are going on within the stratosphere that is exciting at the moment here. I think there's plenty of reason to believe that we have opportunity at least, even though we will have spells of mild. We've got that right now. That has been highlighted here in the channel since way back at the end of November, that we would have a cold end in November, beginning to December. Then we would pull out of it. 
the MJO was fairly amplified through the warm phases of 3, 4 and 5. We're seeing that response right now. We've got the evidence to back up what I'm saying. So there was plenty of channels that was indicating that we would have a cold December and the cold would last through much of December. I believed at the end of week one we would pull out of it. We would see the really deep negative NAO and AO flip back to positive. We had the strongest positive AO, NAO signal for months, you know, literally just in the last week or so. And I believe, and I've given you the evidence to back up why I think we're going to reverse back to that. We're going to reverse. We see the NAO and the AO going back towards neutral. But I expected to go into negative territory. The timing of that is very, very difficult to call. So you have to cut me a little bit of slack. If the timing is a little bit out by a week or so, you can understand that I might be on the right track. Now, listen. January and February, critical months. I have called, made some pretty bold statements saying that we would have a cold first half of the January, a warmer second half, and then with the potential of a sudden stratospheric warming, which hasn't materialized yet, but we're seeing a warming taking place, a weakening of those mean zonal winds at 10 millibars over the stratosphere. We are seeing that take place. And the question is, what influence will that have on the atmosphere we'll look at that in just a second here as well to give you the build up the picture the evidence to support what i'm saying but you can see the focus of the rainfall this is a phase um six seven eight and one of the mjo when you've got that focus precipitation not over to the east that would then drive a powerful jet over north america the atlantic and into europe but we've got it back westwards towards the date line. That is important. Even the month of February, we've got the same idea. Notice here we're starting to increase the rainfall over the maritime continent, which was quite interesting. That could be a slight warm phase. We need to kind of keep a slight eye on that if that happens. And then into the month of March, we've also got it. We can see a little bit more of an extension of the heavy rainfall in the further east of the Pacific here. Looking at the MJO itself here and, and uh, looking at the the two mil the two hundred millibar vertical velocity that is a good indicator uh of seeing where the MJO is trying to go here and I'll try and see if I can find it here so just bear with me back to January and you can see here what's taking place so we've got no enhanced convection over the eastern portion of the Pacific we've got firm subsidence over the maritime continent upward motion west Indian Ocean and also the central portion of the Pacific. That is not a super El Nino look by any stretch. So I want to now start to go and look towards the 50 millibar level here. So this is a lower portion of the stratosphere. And look at the current situation that we've got. So we've got the polar vortex off its axis towards our side of the pole. Notice the warming taking place from eastern Siberia, eastern Asia, right across the top and into North America. This is the initial if we skip out the 168 hours at 50 millibars, you can see the continuation, that progression of that warming taking place. Now, notice also that we've got the core of the polar vortex centered almost bang slap over the UK and Ireland here. And remember what I've said with the MJO rotating back towards phases seven, we're then going to start to see while the buildup of pressure takes place at the moment, we are going to see that high start to retrograde westwards. The question is, how much do we see the warm or the cold wind out? That's my Christmas tree, by the way, in case uh, you're seeing a flash in the background. Sorry about that. But, um, you know, the, the dynamics are complicated, but very, very interesting nonetheless. Let's skip out now to 10 days from now, which um, will take us to the end of the month. This is, remember, the 50 millibar level continuation of this warming progression. So this is a buildup of pressure in the lower portion of the stratosphere, which tends to then compress. It starts to um, expand the stratosphere and contract the troposphere. And when you contract the troposphere, you're increasing the pressure at 500 millibars. So we're going to start to see the buildup of pressure more towards Greenland here. And that's a very, very important signal, by the way, as we go towards the early portion of January. Let's skip all the way out. Uh, 
move my ugly schnoz for just a wee second. Let's skip all the way out to 360 hours and look at what happens. We've got this higher pressure now building over the Baffin Straits. We've got that center of high pressure at 50 millibars now on the other side of the pole. So it starts off away over against the, you know, close to Japan, up into the um, Gulf of Alaska. Now, by the time we get to 360 hours, this is, of course, well into the month of January, we have now got the pressure building up over the Baffin Straits here. What does that suggest? Well, if we look at the GFS extended, this is the GEFS. So this is the, the conglomeration of all the members and merged together into one ensemble here. This is the upcoming seven day period. We've got that positive Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation signal, uh, as you can see. The pressure is high over the middle altitudes, warm pattern overall. But watch what takes place and keep in mind just what I showed you with, with the 50 millibar level. Remember what's taking place. Notice here that as we play through this loop, we start to see that high starting to retrograde west, possibly in conjunction with the MJO shifting back towards more favorable blocky phases here. Now watch what happens with the, the negative here. Instead of it being over Greenland, it's now dropping into Europe. But as that area of high pressure slides westwards, it opens the door, allows that trough to drop into Europe. Notice we've still got a warm pattern over North America here. As, as you've got negative heights over the, the North Pacific, Gulf of Alaska, into Alaska, that then tends to allow milder conditions over that continent. Now watch as we play, continue to play through this loop. This is seven day increments and you can see the pressure change taking place. We're starting to reverse that pre pressure pattern and in conjunction possibly with what's going on at 50 millibars, we are starting to see the heights building over the Arctic over the North American side. Notice the trough now showing up over uh, the central and eastern United States here. We've also got pressure starting to build to the west of the UK here. But of course, where is that high going? That is going to be critical. But watch as we play it through towards the period. This is say uh, the 3rd of January, 10th of, uh, between the 3rd and the 10th of January. That is a colder look. That is more of a, definitely a negative NAO and AO signal. Definitely Arctic Oscillation, most likely negative North Atlantic Oscillation. So very, very interesting times ahead. It could completely fall flat in my face. I understand that. But nonetheless, I've said an, a, a cold first half of January with uh, way back at the beginning that cre the question mark would be over Christmas and New Year. I believe that we would see almost a full rotation of the MJO. We would see the response in the mid and high latitudes uh, with that MJO. And now we're going back towards where we were at the end of November. And uh, it's going to be mighty interesting to see what happens. But look at the difference between this period, which is uh, day 24 through 31. So that's Sunday the 7th and Sunday the 14th of January. That is uh, with a block to the west of the British Isles, trough over Europe here. Uh, almost a, a hooking up of uh, the positives between Hudson Bay, the Arctic, and the North Atlantic here. Look at this versus what we've got now. It's the complete opposite. And the, the stratospheric situation is most interesting to see. There's a lot more members of the ECMWF, by the way, now starting to show that 10 millibar uh, wind either going towards the, the zero line or reversing. So we've definitely got on 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 the table an interesting um stratospheric situation. Finally, let's look at the latest models for Chris. Actually, before we get there, big time rains over the northwest. This is off the Arpege model, the ECMWF and the Icon model. This is about 175 millimeters between now and Tuesday, of course. Snow depth, this is off the ECMWF, and you can see snow largely over high ground, northeast and north highlands. That was in Christmas morning, just at the beginning. This is the GFS for midday Christmas day. So interesting times to come. Keep it right here on the channel and subscribe. Like, uh, let YouTube and myself know that you're enjoying the content and share with your friends and family. Stay tuned. 
There will be probably no video tomorrow. I'm taking a day off, but the Global Weather and Climate Report will be available on Sunday as usual, so stay tuned for that. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Bye for now.